Um, so, being observed, we found out that we have 43 minutes per shift, so there's three shifts a day where our staff are charging patients' phones because they're unable to do it in their rooms, so their rooms don't have um, key fobs like some of the other units, some of the service users were telling us, which is excellent, but we're not having that come into us, unfortunately. Um, we charge them um, next to, yeah, in a separate room. Service users have been raising this in the community meeting for some time, but we would like to be able to charge our devices um, without relying on staff and look at the staff time being used to do that. So we've looked at this quite a lot over the years, different options. We could do nothing, waste no time. We could have this beautiful device. So we've looked at mobile phone um, device charging locker. means that they can put their devices themselves on charge independently. There's only 10 slots, we're hoping that's okay. We've got eight sockets at the moment in our little charging space that we're using. So we're hoping it's gonna be enough that patients can go, set the code so it's locked there, leave it to charge, come back when they open it, it resets, next patient can come along. And it's really important having that link to the outside world. I was talking to Sarah and she was saying, you know, just being able to text her mum when she needs to, you know, if you can go and get your phone and, and have it on charge when you need it, it's um, really, really important. So we researched the products, spoken to the people who are providing the products to make sure the things we need to do to make it suitable for our environment. Um, talk to service users both back at the branch and community meetings but also in this process. Um, spoken to estates about what I'm going to need to do to get it installed, all that kind of jazz. And uh, yeah, hopefully in the future we're going to release all that time and they can actually spend time with patients and patients don't have to I feel like you're always begging for stuff when you're in hospital. Please can I get the laundry because it's in the mail corridor and I can't change my bed without it. Please can I have my phone? Mm -hmm. Please can I go and leave and wait for someone to sign out? It's just something to be a bit more independent. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's me I think. Yeah. Yeah. Can we move on to MDT? <coughs> <coughs> so I'm Jane, I'm a psychologist. I'm a hopeless too. I'm Helen Moss. So as it was raised earlier, um, we recognise through the, um, this process that we have at least 90 hours worth of time, um, that's clinical and administrative time every week in MDTs as they currently stand. And um, what we heard from our service users, both those involved with us this week, but also from regularly in our community meeting, is that people were finding the current MDT format really intimidating, they didn't feel able to have a voice in a meeting with maybe nine, ten professionals, laptops and things all in one room. Um, so although the, the idea was that that was the place for service users to discuss their care plan, they weren't able to do so. Um, so we really wanted to look at how we improve that, how we improve the service user experience and how we try and free up some of that um, uh, time. Um, and to make the whole thing more uh, individualised. Uh, sorry, I got interrupted. Sorry, I smell a gas. Yeah. <laughs>